In this video, I wanted to show you quickly how we can use Mendeley to help you with your citing and your referencing. So we have two things that we need. One is Mendeley software that you can download from free uh, from Mendeley.com. And then we need to connect it to Microsoft Word. So if you have Mendeley uh, downloaded, you're able to set up an account. And what we need to do is connect them both together so that they can I suppose, communicate the two software packages. So with Mendeley, when you have it installed, you can have it as a, a web access that we synchronize with our desktop software. So here you'll see this synchronize button that keeps both accounts in check. And um, we can go to tools and you need to do something called install the Microsoft Word plugin. So you'll see here it says uninstall, that's because I have it in already. Yours might look slightly different than mine. I'm not using a Mac system where you might have on a PC, but its menu should look very similar. So you install that Microsoft Word plugin and you re-launch um, then Microsoft Word. And what you'll see under the references tab in Microsoft looks a bit different now. They do have their own Microsoft citation system, but here now you'll see this M from Mendeley, this red M system. So we have open Mendeley, insert bibliography, and we have export as a style and so on. We have a few different options all to do with Mendeley. So let's say we're talking in Microsoft Word first and we're saying that, um, let's say feedback is uh, an important process in higher, uh, higher education. Okay, and then I want to put in um, a particular reference that I have here. So back over, if I shoot to Mendeley, just to show you, I have um, quite a lot of papers obviously put in here. And as you look down, every time you see a little PDF logo here, it means I have the paper in the database. So for example, if we pick this one, if I click it once, all the data has been kind of extracted from that PDF by Mendeley. I have the title, it's a journal article. I have the authors, the journal, the year, the volume, the issue, the page number, and the abstract. And I have the PDF here. So if I want to view the actual PDF, I can access it straight away. I can even highlight, if I wanted to highlight some text, I can leave notes or annotations um, as I want to, as things that might be important when I go through them. So just going back to my library, all my papers are in one place. Now you might say, well, how do I get them in here? Well, if you have a PDF, all you have to do is drag the PDF into this middle window and it'll automatically upload everything into Mendeley. Now it is not 100% full, you know, error proof. Um, you do have to, when you put in a PDF, you do have to kind of do a cross check that everything makes sense just to be sure. It does happen on some occasions that you might get different metadata being extracted, but it, it's very rare. Now, some of these you see then don't have PDF icons. So these are ones that I've put in manually. So it might be a book chapter I've read or um, I've accessed and I want to get it into Mendeley, but I don't have a PDF to drag and drop. So how did I get that in there? Well, I went in Mendeley up to file and I went to add entry manually. And when you come here, this is where you can access say a book and it tells you the information and you populate as much as you can and it'll enter it into the system. You might, I think, use this more specifically for a web page. So if you have a web page, it pulls in, you put in the information manually and then you'll have it in your system. And um, so that way you can easily cite and reference uh, your collection. Okay, so if we go back to Microsoft Word, we want to insert a citation and a reference here. So let's say for example, I want to find an article that I know is in my Mendeley system. It's one that say, just for example, is by Margaret Price. And that's what I want to find this particular article. Well, what I need to do back in Microsoft Word is now insert the citation. And if I put in Margaret Price, I'll find that article. And now all of a sudden, Price et al 2010 has been inserted into my document. So it's uh, a way by putting in the citation. If I click on it, you'll see it's kind of highlighted gray. And this is almost like a label for everything that's linked with Mendeley. So let's say for example, here I want to put in, uh, there's another reference that I want to put in here by somebody called say David Carlos. Okay, so I put in Carlos and I pick uh, David Carlos's paper and I put that in as well. It'll now put both in for me and you can keep adding and editing as you see fit. Okay, so I might put in one by uh, Naomi Winston um, with feedback. Okay, so I can put in whatever it basically you're getting your key point from. Uh, if you have an, uh, the article that you read it in, I've just picked some random examples here, but you can pick them like this. So it's getting your citations done for you and then you can continue typing your text. I would highly advise you, the biggest advantage uh, you will gain is if you cite while you write. 
So that means literally adding the citations as you write the sentence and not coming back to, to add in citations later on or call them citation one, two, three and things like that. Cite while you write. I can't recommend that enough. So if I ultimately um, I'm sure you're wondering, well, where's the reference? If you have a references section on, let's just say it's down on the next page and I um, want to insert my bibliography, I'm able to press insert bibliography. So what that's going to do is it's going to scan the software for everything that it's highlighting gray and then generate the references. So insert bibliography. There's my bibliography done, all my references. OK, so I have the Carlos reference price, Winston, all done out here. However, I want you to look at the way that the references are generated here. They're generated using Harvard by Oxford Brookes University, and we want it to look like DKITs in the Institute. So what we're going to do here is look at all the different options. But we're going to look for our particular one. So you'll see I have it installed already here, Harvard Dundalk Institute of Technology, but you won't see that initially. So we have to install it. And once you do that, everything will appear the way the college wants you to uh, present your references. So click on styles and go to more styles. And when you go to more styles, you get a list of all the ones we've installed and we can go and get more ones. So you won't see DKIT here initially. So we have to get more styles. And it's in here that you will type in Dundalk Institute of Technology. And once you do that, you have to install it. So you, it'll say install at this stage. And once you've installed it, you can then go back to your installed ones and you'll find Harvard Dundalk Institute of Technology and you'll hit use this style and done. And what that does then back in Microsoft Word is it will now um, we'll be able to update everything. So if you had it in a particular style, you can hit refresh. It'll scan through and find the particular things and generate the references the way you want. You can add um, spacing as you see fit. Um, at the end or however you want to present your references. Now, let's say, for example, we had another um, paper here and we wanted to talk about um, a paper from someone called, say, David Bood. OK, so I put Bood and now I want to go and get that paper, but I want it as an in, um, in sentence citation. I can go here and I can type in Bood. OK, so I can get all these papers. So let's say, for example, here, um, now it has boot and then boot 2000. So I don't want boot boot 2000. It, it just doesn't look right. See, it's already put in this, the reference for me immediately. Well, what I can do here is just get rid of that 2000 or the boot and leave the 2000. And Mendeley kind of has a bit of a panic and says, you know, you've made a manual edit. You've taken control here. Do you want to undo it or do you want to keep it? So if I hit undo, it's going to go back and it's going to call it the boot 2000. But here, as long as I just get rid of that neatly, uh, I can then keep this manual edit. And in Microsoft Word, I can then um, boot presented um, and so on. Right? I can keep going on that way. You see, it's still highly gray. So Mendeley will find it even, at, even as it scans. But every time we refresh, it's going to kind of come across this manual edit. So you might get that kind of question. Are you sure you want to keep a manual edit or undo it? So Mendeley is something that I think will save you a huge amount of time. It needs management. It needs you to make sure that the data coming in is correct. It means you have a library that you can bring with you. So for example, if you um, you sync your desktop system, it means you can go to Mendeley.com and look at your PDFs, look at your notes, what's highlighted in different um, access, you know, different computers across campus. And it means that your PDFs will be there. So if you wanted to read a particular article, and you want to see the PDF, well, we can click that article and find the particular um, topic that we want. The PDF is there with you. And then what it lets you do most importantly is engage with Microsoft Word. Sometimes you need to have your college version of Microsoft Office installed if you see that they don't connect with each other. And you may need to do that um, by downloading the newest version. And you can do that from where you access your webmail and you can install it. I think some other issues can pop up with how they communicate, but most of the time it works quite seamlessly. I do think that if you download the latest version, a college version with your college ID um, set up, if you download the Mendeley desktop uh, application, and then also I'd ask you to set up a Mendeley account, all free, and just install that tool, the plugin, so that they communicate with each other and give it a go. 
And I think to try and just drag a PDF into the middle, it should get you all the metadata that you're accessing. And then also, as I said to you, a key thing that students will really benefit is adding entries manually. So you can drag in PDFs, but if you don't have that option, you can manually add a web page information or a book chapter. And then that article will be very easy for you to find when you're back in Microsoft Word. So that's just a very simple example of how you can um, edit and change this. So say, for example, you've read this and you realize you put the wrong, a wrong one in or you wanted to change it. We can edit this quite easily. So say we wanted to take out um, a particular paper. We might say, well, let's just take out one here. We just delete that and press OK and you'll find it'll remove it. And it's also gone straight away from your references. So it saves you a lot of pressure at the end of an article or an end of a report or a project that you're submitting. I think if you're going to have quite a lot of references in future projects, it's definitely something to consider. Hope this video gives you a nice indication of Mendeley and how it can be a real time saver and, and help you out. Lots of resources on the DKIT library website and also their lib guides that they've created um, for your programs on how Mendeley can be integrated into your workflow. Okay, hope this helps.